Hi there. So today I'm going to do something I haven't done in a couple months. I just forgot about it. Um, I'm going to do the next chapter in the Bible. And from my previous videos, I don't, if you haven't watched them, that I've done two on the Bible. I'm just reading through the chapters and just pointing out the few things that I find interesting. Reading it like a book. Um, I have not read the Bible since I quote unquote woke up. I read it extensively as a child. I was obsessed with it for some reason. I know now, <laughs> I think why, um, to do things like this. Now, just because I think that the God in this book likely is the story of how um, reptilians enslaved humanity, but just because that's what I think, in no way, shape, or form means that I think that there that, that we weren't created, um, or that there is not a hierarchical, you know, um, I don't know, um, hierarchical system uh, realms. There, there may be, there may be gods, or or who knows. Okay, so. How do I get to my... Oops. Okay. All right. So, we're in Leviticus today. Now, I didn't um, highlight this as well as I have maybe in the past. Okay. So, basically, this whole page is just this big to-do about sacrifice. How to do it. Um, you know, why, why does it have to be blood sacrifice? You know, that's very interesting. Um, do they, does he need to... Do these beings need to consume this? Um, I have been, you know, I mean, because you would think, I mean, a blood sacrifice, there would be blood dripping all over the altar of the church. I have heard that uh, in the ancient days, you know, when they actually pretend drank the blood of Christ, they drank blood off the altar. So, anyhow, um, we've got a really elaborate ritual here, you know, that if you're going to make a sacrifice to me, you know, he needs to be a male without blemish. Um, you know, you got to put his hand on the head of it, and then you got to kill it before the Lord and the priests, and you got to sprinkle the blood around the altar, and then you got to, you know, flay the burnt offering <laughs> and cut it into pieces. I mean, I guess you just flop it up there on the altar and cut it into pieces. I don't know. And then they, then they put fire on it, and then they, I mean... You know, we're talking an elaborate ritual. So then it's a burnt sacrifice. You know, and it needs to be a perfect animal and just all these things. I just think about without blemish because someone is planning on consuming this and they don't want a sick um, animal. But it's just my thoughts. Okay, so we got a very specific ritual process. And basically, the first seven chapters or something of this uh, text is a very specific ritual process for, you know, priests have to sacrifice this way and things like that. So, you know, and, and still we, we've got more of the ritual here. You know, when we offer meat unto the Lord, it's got to be a flower. you got to put oil on it. Then you got to put frankincense on it. You know, I mean, this is an elaborate ritual. And a ritual intensifies magic, as we know. Or as one may know. As I know. Okay, so... Then, here in chapter 3, we're talking about laws for peace offerings. Now, peace offering. Okay, that makes me think, here, I'm going to give this to you so you don't kill me. Here, I'm going to give this to you. So, you here, here's a peace offering. Here's a goat so you don't eat me instead. That's what I think when I think peace offering. What on earth kind of benevolent ruler would be asking for peace offerings? Okay. Uh, not one. I mean, are we trying to keep the monsters satisfied, satisfied enough that they don't mess with us? You know? I mean, I just, I don't... You know, so if it's a, uh, you know, peace offering, we've got another elaborate ritual, you know, and this involves, you know, 
you got to cut it a certain way, take the fat off the liver and the kidneys and burn. I mean, this, this is really intricate here. I mean, this is clearly ritual magic. Ritual blood magic, by the way. Okay. Then we got... Oh, where are we at here? On... Oh, I don't even know what chapter this is. Blast. Um, well, what chapter was the last one? Last one was three. This is probably four. It could be further down. I'm sorry. I, I, I did this wrong. But, um, okay, this here, we were starting on 22, and we're talking about how, you know, when th this is just that same, you know, rule that the cabal or the elites or whoever uh, try to make us go by, and that is you are accountable for wrongdoings that you don't realize are wrongdoings. You know, and so this is when someone has sinned through ignorance. This is how, you know, how you do the ritual then, you know. Um, oh, and, you know, it's very sick. And so I have it on the side here. One is allegedly accountable for sins committed in ignorance. This is very similar to the Cabal's rule that ignorance of their game is no excuse of, you know, not knowing the rules. The same faction that is in power still today likely demanded this very text written and the word scriptures does indicate the use of a script. Okay. Now, we get into all these clean and unclean animals. You know, and I don't know why I highlighted that. Oh, I think I was going to highlight the different kinds of animals. But then, like, it became this big, long thing. And so, I just didn't didn't do it. Um, there's different ones, you know, like, What hath no fins nor scales in the waters? That shall be an abomination to you. So, like, would a crab or a shrimp or something be an abomination, I suppose? So, then, you know, we got purification after childbirth. You know, this is talking about the, the ritual that you need to do after childbirth. Um, I mean, this entire text is, I mean, this entire chapter is literally the um, you know, laws of ritual sacrifice. I would like to look up the etymology of Leviticus. So I might do that. Okay, so here we got uh, verse 3 here. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Now, as many of you that are watching this channel likely know, circumcision is a barbaric practice that is completely unnecessary. Um, I don't know if it began here during this historical time frame, but it is definite mind control to act as if it's a, it is about cleanliness. Um, you know, to clean a foreskin is not very hard. Um, but it is, uh, my feeling is that it is to keep men from experiencing as much feeling during sex and likely the intent is to keep males from developing proper intimacy with females. And that in turn makes all of these agendas to destroy family units, which is ultimately what it gets down to, much easier. Because in order to, you know, you have to destroy the human community to get them to, and the human connection in order to get us to accept transhumanism. Another thing you have to do is you have to make people so afraid of death that they are willing to, you know, live forever in this place. It's an interesting thing. And I also, again, oh, Leviticus 17. Okay. This is just interesting. And whatsoever man there be in the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you that eateth any manner of blood... I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So it is blood that makes atonement for the soul. Forget intention. Forget being sorry. Forget any of that. I need your blood in order for you to be forgiven. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then the, the first thing that pops into my head is, so, okay, if one eats a rare steak, they're cut off from God? Seems a bit harsh. Uh-huh. Because it says, Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. And whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. Interesting. So then here in Leviticus 18, we get into the one of the places that homosexuality is mentioned. 
in Leviticus 1822, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. This is one of the few places that homosexuality is discussed in this book. It, it isn't that big of a deal as far as I'm concerned, you know, because love thy neighbor is mentioned over a hundred times. And all these people that, you know, damn homosexuality and all this stuff and everything. Well, it's more important to love your neighbor and leave that damnation to the creator if there is some kind of judgment. I don't think there is. Well, I mean, I know there's not. Well, if you're judged, you judge yourself. And that's when you go through the reincarnation trap. But that's another video. Okay. Now... Okay, so, but here, you know, basically the consuming of the flesh and homosexuality, they carry the same punishment. I mean, we get into, you know, for ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For so who for whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Okay. Okay. And you know, and he always has to, I am the Lord your God. I am the one you listen to. I am an egomaniacal person. You know, I I have to prove that I'm better than the rest of these other gods competing for your attention. I mean, I almost think that maybe this was in the time of when the Old Testament at any rate was in the time of when humanoids and um um when the beasts were disappearing from the earth. I I feel that when we got here humans were very used to different types of beings. But then as time went on, these rulers or whoever is monitoring this place realized that we would take orders better from a humanoid and so they figured out a way to make themselves the reptile form turn into humanoids and there there likely could be other types of shapeshifters i've heard of amphibious shapeshifters i feel that octopi are incredibly important um something about an octopus that just completely creeps me out spiders also something about them anyways it's a little sidebar um okay so where are we at okay so you know we're offering peace offerings and stuff here now this this paragraph basically says so if you offer a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the lord you shall offer it at your own will and it will be eaten the same day you offer it and on the, and the next day on the morrow and if it remain until the third day, it shall be burnt in the fire. And if it be eaten at all on the third day, it is, an, it is abominable, and it shall not be accepted. Therefore, everyone that eats it shall bear his iniquity, because he hath profaned the hallowed thing of the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. So, if you don't do this ritual sacrifice properly, if you, let's say, sacrifice your last lamb, and you're hungry... And instead, you eat part of that lamb instead of setting it on fire to the Lord on the third day. Uh, you're damned, okay? You're damned. Let's forget forgiveness and, you know, you're my creation and I don't want you starving. Forget that. You're damned. You didn't follow the ritual. I mean, this just gets more insane every chapter I read. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know where we'll be by the time I'm in the New Testament. My goodness. Okay. So here we go into the first place where it talks about love thy neighbor, you know. And it goes into, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't glean thy vineyard. You shouldn't, you know, gather every grape from the vineyard, from your vineyard. You should leave some for the poor. You shouldn't steal or deal falsely or lie to one another. And, you know, you shouldn't defraud thy neighbor, rob him. You know, you shouldn't curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind. You know, you shouldn't, you know, make things harder for people. 
Um, you sh- shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness you shall judge thy neighbor. You don't judge them by what kind of car they have or whatever. You judge them by their character. Judgment is to form an opinion. And it's the act of condemning the neighbor that you don't want. But you are going to form a judgment. You're going to form an opinion about your neighbor. And and you need to for your own safety. You know, I mean, you want to follow your gut feeling, you know, if that neighbor feels like a serial killer or a rapist or something. I mean, you don't want to... Oh, well, the Bible says love everybody, even though your gut feeling is like, don't, don't, you know. I mean, but we don't have to condemn the neighbor. I mean, even if you do have a bad feeling that the neighbor is a rapist, you don't have to go around and telling everyone, oh, I think he's a rapist. Or you don't have to, you know, wish that, you know, pray at night. Oh, I, I kill that. I, you know, I hope that rapist in down the street burns in hell. That's the kind of thing we can't be doing. Okay. I mean, intention. I mean, wishing ill will on somebody. I mean, that is in no way, shape, or form righteous. Okay. No matter. I mean, because you just don't know. I mean, no matter what they've done to you, you don't necessarily know what you've got karmically coming back. Our memories have been wiped in between lives, and we absolutely are under a karma program while we are participating in this matrix. Now, that there's not a karma program in in the quote-unquote real world. Okay, so... So here we go, you know, so you shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall you use enchantment. Here we start going after people that practice magic because we don't want competition. Nor observe times. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shall you mar the corners of thy beard. So we can't even cut our hair a certain way. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. Tattoos. I am the Lord. Okay. So, no eating blood, cut your hair a certain way, and no tattoos. Does observed times mean no unapproved holidays? It makes me think, you know, nor observed times. I don't think there's anywhere in this text where it talks about you should observe Christmas. There may be. We'll find out later. Okay. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. So don't listen to those with divine psychic gifts, um, you know, that have come from the God mind or the higher creator than me. Um, And don't seek after wizards, you know, people that can perform magical acts or have. It's people with abilities, basically. Now, familiar spirits can also be a demonic possession, but... I intuitively really strongly feel in this case we are talking about people with divine gifts. Okay, now here we talk about punishments for disobedience and we talk about anybody giving his seed unto Moloch. Now, isn't Moloch another ancient god? Um, They're calling it Molech, but I'm thinking Moloch. I'm going to have to look some of that up because I can't remember who he is, but... Lucifer and Moloch are two demons or gods that people... I suspect they're all Lucifer, God, uh, Moloch. They're all reptilians. Okay. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. So, again, you know, anyone that, you know, follows somebody that has like a psychic gift that says basically that this isn't your true God or that isn't what I see or I see, you know, whatever. Anybody that has a gift that he doesn't understand, they're bad. Okay, and then here again in 13, this is 2013. If a man also lie with mankind, does he lie with a woman? Both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death, and their blood shall be upon them. Now, they're being put to death instead of being cut off from God. At first, the last time, it was just an abomination, and and they were going to be cut off from their people. Now, they're going to be put to death. Okay? And then, 
um, oh, okay. And then here, you know, a man also or woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. So God, the God being is likely reptilian, doesn't like those with the divine spark and abilities from the God mind that he doesn't have. Familiar spirit refers to demonic possession and or psychic ability. And I just talked about this. Basically, anyone who practices witchcraft shall be put to death. The God in this book didn't want competition. This entire book is nothing but witchcraft. Thus far, that's what I've seen. Okay, so, and then in here, this is an interesting choice of words. So, if you obey me, you know, basically, if you obey me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I'll rid, them, I'll rid the evil beasts out of the land, neither shall sword go through your land. So, you know, I'll, I'll make it peaceful here, okay? And, you know, I'll respect you. And I'll make you fruitful and multiply, and I'll, and I'll establish a covenant with you, you know. And my soul shall not abhor you. My soul shall not hate you, really. And I will walk among you, and I'll be your God, and ye shall be my people. You know, I'm the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. So, I mean, I can just see a guy, you know, this big old dragon guy. Talking about, you know, and I'm not going to eat y'all. And, uh, you know, and I'll let y'all live here in peace. You know, as long as y'all blood sacrifice to me and stuff. Okay. It's like he'll tolerate those who obey him. That's basically it. I mean, I mean, screw, you know, that I am the all-powerful creator and I will create you a new realm and I will make this realm heaven on earth and I will... You know, and I will let you experience anything you want. And I'll, no, no, forget that. I'm just going to, you know, rid this place of evil beasts. And I'm not going to eat you. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, sweetheart. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna have, somebody just got up from a nap and she's upset here. But I think that's pretty much all I, got, I have here. Um, there wasn't anything in these last few pages that I found. So, yet again, that's another installment of the biblical text, how I read it, <laughs> how I see it with new eyes. Um, yeah, it's really something. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please share my channel. Um, you can consider supporting me on Patreon. These things take time or a one-time donation. Or if you'd like a service instead, I also do tarot readings. You can try me out there. These um, videos take time and a little bit harder with screaming kids.